What's up, fight fans, and welcome back to the show. We got another great card to break down for you. And of course, I have Mr. Joseph Uglyman Holmes with me as always to get ready for another fantastic UFC event. Joseph, this time it's UFC 286 live from London, England. It goes down tomorrow night. I mean, I'm so excited for this. The, the main and the co-main event are elite fights. And as always, let's start right at the top of the card, my man. The, the welterweight title is on the line. Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman, the trilogy bout. And Leon's the champ. Kamaru's trying to get his belt back. Kamaru's the big favorite, minus 250. Leon Edwards, plus 210 as the underdog in his backyard. You know, if this goes to a decision, those, those judges might be leaning towards Leon. How do you see this fight going? What do you think we're going to see here in this title matchup? I mean, I, I like this fight so much. I think that Leon's going to pull it off this time. Um, he has the most recent, like, not just a victory, but, you know, he has Kamaru's timing down. You know, he has his tendencies down. I know Kamaru has that, that first win, but after what just recently happened, Leon putting him away devastatingly. I don't see that Leon let off the gas and uh, I don't see him losing this match. So yeah, I definitely got Leon. Wow. Really? Okay. That's so interesting. I got to give it up to you, man. Cause you were a hundred percent right about John Jones. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm telling you. I, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But as far as this fight goes, so their most recent matchup. What's that? I'm here. Not that I was talking to my kid and he's, he's over here, man. <laughs> Okay. As far as this most re recent matchup goes, I mean, Leon looked pretty good in the first round, right? But then rounds two, three, and four, Usman dominated. And and I felt like he kind of let off the, the gas a little bit in that fifth round. And, a, a and I don't want to take anything away from Leon, but I, it seemed like Kamaru was, was holding back. Okay, I'm going to win a decision here. Do, do you agree with that? Or, or do you feel like that, that Leon learned something about that, about Usman's timing, like you were saying, leading into this trilogy fight. Yeah, I mean, Kamaru had a pace that was super high on Leon, and he was landing strikes. And, you know, it seemed like Kamaru had Leon's number during that fight. But, you know, that's what a fight is. You know what I mean? A, one guy puts something on you, and you're trying to learn how to deal with it and how to, you know, overcome it. And that's exactly what Leon did. By the end of the fight, he got that timing down. You know, he got the inspiration from his coaches. And he did what he needed to do to get the knockout finished. Leon was never once, in my opinion, uh, trying to coast uh, to a decision win or anything like that. So I imagine that's Leon's his character, you know, and that's what he's going to bring into this next fight. He's going to be looking for that finish probably from the start, uh, the way he put him away the first time. And, um, you know, I imagine he's going to get a quicker finish this time. Wow. Okay. So, man, if, if Leon Edwards goes in and, and beats the Nigerian Nightmare again, and retains the belt. I mean, where does that put the the former champ Usman? I mean, what would be next for him? Would he consider you think maybe going up to your weight class, one eighty five? Yeah, that's, that's, I don't know. I don't know if I've heard anything about him talking about coming up. Um, I don't know if that even be beneficial to him if he's not even you know beating the champ at his own weight class. So. Um, man, honestly, I couldn't even imagine, but I know Leon would have some fun matchups and that's kind of what I'm excited to see if that's what happens. Okay. So you see Leon Edwards finishing this fight. What round, how do you see him doing it? TKO submission. Give me your official prediction. I can see him getting a finish like fourth round. You know, I feel like Kamaru's going to do a lot of cage pressure, um, and do a lot of things to kind of negate, Leon's range uh, arsenal, but um, I could see Kamal getting to the fourth and Leon maybe TK on him, maybe catching him to the body since Kamal is probably going to have his hands a lot higher. Uh, Leon looking for body kicks and things like that, maybe TK on him right there in the fourth. Okay, that's interesting. I'm going the opposite direction. I think Kamara Usman is going to be more motivated, a chip on his shoulder, wanting to go in there and prove a point. Uh, I think I think Usman's going to get a finish. I think it's going to be probably third or fourth round, uh, but I'm going that way because I feel like if this goes the distance with this being in London, England, you know, with the judges, man, you just never really know. I, I would imagine if it's a close fight, they're going to lean towards Leon. Man, I imagine Kamara's gonna be so timid, dude. This guy just turned his lights off. If I had to go into the octagon against a guy who had just recently 
turn my lights off, I would be very timid. I wouldn't be very confident, you know, and honestly, I probably would, I probably would, you know, try and compensate for my fear with, you know, talking and like, you know, like talking smack, which is what I saw from Kamaru Usman at the weigh-in. So I don't know, or at the, at the press conference. So I don't know, man. I'm really pulling for Leon. Leon seems really cool, calm, collected, confident. You know, he knows what he's capable of. He just did it. You know, I don't see, I don't know how people can see Kamaru winning after he just got absolutely <laughs> plastered. All right, so that's your main event. And if that wasn't exciting enough, your co-main event is another absolute banger. This one is in the lightweight division. Justin Gaethje, Raphael Fazeev. And Fazeev is a, another sizable favorite here. Minus 220, Gaethje's the dog, plus 185. I mean, we know what Gaethje brings to, to the octagon, what, what he brings as a fighter. I mean, he's going to march forward. He's going to look to take your, your head off. But he also has that wrestling pedigree. And with someone like Fazeev, Joseph, who is a world-class striker, he's got great cardio, do you think Gaethje has to mix it up and get this fight to the ground and use his wrestling to win? Because a lot of people feel like Fazeev is going to be able to stick and move and really outpoint him on the feet. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Gaethje's going to have to push the pressure for sure. Um, he's definitely going to have to grab him, lock up with him, you know, and just really just make it a really close fight. Can't let Fazeev hang out on the outside. Um, but Gaethje has a great gas tank as well. Um, he has awesome timing, and he has the experience. And he's just an all-around dog, man. I've always been a Gaethje fan since World Series of Fighting. Um, I'm really excited to see this matchup with him, actually. And uh, I, I pray Gaethje gets this win because I'm a huge Justin Gaethje fan. I'm a Gaethje fan, too. I, I almost feel like, though, with this fight, and we're going to be going opposite directions here in both of these fights, the main and the co-main. I'm going with Fazeev. But I, I feel like this is almost kind of like a, a changing of the guard a little bit at the top of the, the lightweight division. You know, Gaethje's getting a little bit older. Fazeev is, is younger. I just feel like he's he's not even he's not even in his prime he's coming into his prime right now i just think he's hungry he has that big win most recently over rda before that he finished brad riddell he beat bobby green hanato mokano mark diacasey he, he's got a lot of big wins and this one this would be a massive feather in his cap to go in there and not just beat but finish justin gaethje you're going gaethje do you think he he wins this via decision or is is there going to be a finish here on uh, the highlight reels uh, part. I think if Gaethje gets the win, it will be a decision. It will be, or something very, or, you know, later rounds. This is only a three rounder though. So man, Fazeev is a scary opponent, man, but Gaethje's game, dude, I think Gaethje can hang with him as far as gas tank wise. As long as Gaethje isn't like getting punch hungry this fight and like eating a whole lot of punches, I think that we can pull it off, man. We just have to match uh, Fazeev's volume and uh, definitely implement some of our wrestling. It's, even if it's not a takedown, you know, just grab him, you know, knock him off his game, put him on the fence, um, things like that. But, yeah, I, I got my man, Gabe G, all day, man. You got to leave us alone. <laughs> hey, I, I'm just going to be totally transparent here. Parent here. I want Justin Gaethje to win. I've always been a Justin Gaethje fan. I just think that Fazeev is going to win. Having said that, too, I want Leon Edwards to win, but I, I just think Kamaro is going to win. So I'm, I'm trying to be objective here. That, that, that's, that's all I'm saying because both of these fights, they are, they're awesome. They're, these fights are for the fans. I mean, the main and co-main, co it's really fantastic. All right. Gunnar Nelson, Brian Barbarena, Gunnar Nelson. I mean, in his backyard, minus 360, Brian Barbarena plus 285 is the dog. I haven't really seen many people picking Brian Barbarena to win this one. I'm going with the favorite here, Gunnar Nelson. I think he gets it done inside the distance, probably by submission, uh, using his, his wrestling heavy offense. What do you see in this fight? I like Gunnar. I mean, I, I do like Gunnar, actually. I'm back, I've been a long fan of Gunnar Nelson. Uh, their records are pretty similar. Barbarena, I like too. He's kind of like a Gabe G to me, though. He's a uh, real forward, um, heavy hands, um, combination things like that, looking for kill shots and stuff. Man. I feel like Brian's been more active, so I think I'm going to go with Brian Bar Brian getting the dubs. Wow, okay. We are just on opposite ends of the spectrum here on this card. That's cool, though. That's okay. That's okay. 
Hey, it's fun. It's fun that way, man. But I got Brian. I think that he's been fighting more more recent. He's really aggressive. Um, Gunner's good too. He's kind of a long striker, uh, but heavy like top side wrestler. Uh I got my man Brian, man. I think he's gonna put them hands on. I know. I think he's gonna put them hands on. Okay. All right. Well, that would be uh, an upset right there. Plus two eighty five. If you bet on Brian Barbarena and he gets the win here, you could win some serious cash. Uh, if you put down a bet on uh, this welterweight bout. All right. Jennifer Maya and Casey O'Neill is up next. Casey O'Neill is undefeated. She's nine and zero, but Jennifer Maya is a veteran if there ever was one. Twenty nine and one is her record. She's been around for a really long time and the odds are a lot closer here casey o'neill is a minus 170 favorite jennifer maya plus 140 dog what do you see in this female bout at 125 pounds uh, i see the experience it's kind of hard to overlook the experience man um but she does have nine losses and as an undefeated fighter i don't know if i would feel like somebody who's lost that much could beat me so i think i'm gonna go with the undefeated fighter casey um, I think she takes it home. All right. We're on the same page with this one. I'm going with Casey O'Neill to to win a decision. I think she gets the, the victory, but I don't think she puts Jennifer Maya out. I think Jennifer Maya is too good for that. Uh, Joseph, this next fight, this one's in your weight class, and it's one that yeah. I'm salivating for. Martin Me too. Corey, Roman Delidze. Oh, man. Delidze, you know, he's on a win streak. He's been looking good. But, you know, Marvin Vittori is no joke, man. This guy is is the real deal. He's a tough opponent. Vittori's a pretty big favorite. Minus 275. Roman Delidze, plus 235 as the dog. What do you see in this middleweight bout? Man, I've never really liked Marvin Vittori's style. He kind of seems like a street fighter to me, the way he, the way he fights. Um, but he has only lost to recently the champ, right? And uh, one of the – was it uh, – I can't think of his name. Um, I can't think of his name, but he's only lost to two of the top guys. So He lost to Robert Whitaker and Izzy. Whitaker, yeah, so both the recent champs. Um, I have liked Roman, though. Roman's been looking really good lately, really aggressive. Um, and he's been getting finishes as well. I think I got Roman on I think I got Roman on this. I've never really liked Marvin's style. Yeah. So with, with uh, Roman's last fight, he was actually getting pieced up a little bit by Jack Hermanson. And ultimately he was able to, to get him out of there. He got the back and he finished him with, with punches from, from back control. Uh, and he had those big wins over Phil Hawes and Kyle Dawkins. I think the difference in this fight is going to be the wrestling of Marvin Vittori. I, I think the, the second he feels like a big punch from delete say he he's going to go into uh, his wrestling game, uh, get this fight to the ground and just control him with, with his wrestling. So I, I feel like, you were saying you don't like his style that much. This might not be the most appealing fight to the fans out there because I think it's going to be a grappling match on the cage, on the ground. And I think um, Vittori is going to win a decision. Do, do, can you see that? Do you, do you see, I see that? Yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Plus, Marvin has the experience, man. He's been in there with some of the, you know, the higher level of, of, our, of the division. So it's really hard to... I think it's safe to go with the with the fave, but I personally would probably go for Roman just because he's more exciting and he's going to be looking for that finish and and I like his style. Okay, all right, and we are doing this show a little bit later in the week than than we normally do, so we're not going to cover every single fight on this card. We just ran through the main card, but I do want to touch upon a couple of fights on the undercard and and the the main event as far as the undercard goes is Jack Shore and Makwan Americani. This is a featherweight bout, uh, and this is really interesting. I mean, Jack Shore is a really really big favorite, minus five hundred plus on on some sites depending on where you're betting amir khani is a plus 380 dog and i know with jack shore being kind of like someone that the ufc wants to groom into a star a contender they want him to win but you know amir khani is is a veteran he's got a lot of tools in his, in his skill set do you think there's any way he makes this into a competitive fighter do you feel like jack shore is going to come in there and excite the hometown crowd um i mean as far as records go i think jack shore uh, could come in a little bit more confident and aggressive. Um, I always look at when a guy has like multiple losses, you know what I mean? And then depending on how those losses come, somebody who's like just taking one loss or, you know, or undefeated, you know, they just have a different confidence, you know, that's kind of just hard to match when like 
people have knocked you out or, you know, choked you out or put you away. So I think Jack Shore, yeah, and he's the hometown guy. I think Jack Shore is probably going to show up and, 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 and put on a clinic. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking, too. And again, when I look at a lot of these fights on the undercard, I mean, look at this one. Muhammad Makayev is a minus 850 favorite over Rafael Cavalcante Filho. I mean, look, we, we know the Makayev. This is a guy that was, I mean, just an absolute stud as an amateur. A lot of fights uh, as an amateur fighter. And now in the UFC, I mean, this is someone that a lot of people feel like could be a, a future champion. So I think those those. uh odds are fairly accurate uh unfortunately for uh Calvacante. but i mean you got that right there it's the that's the biggest mismatch uh, on the card as far as the odds go i mean and then juliana miller and veronica macedo uh juliana is a minus 450 favorite over veronica <laughs> yeah. so you you expect juliana to go in there and look great yeah, I mean, she seems fearless to me, man. She seems like uh, the type that's just not worried about what somebody else is throwing at her. She's just going to get her game going and, and look good doing it, man. I, I like her a lot. I think she's going to put on an awesome show. She has a small record, but she's fighting a fairly fairly greener opponent as well uh, with Veronica. So, yeah, I think Juliana puts on. And even if she doesn't, I, I think that if, if it's a hard-fought fight, then her stock will still go up. Yeah. No, I mean, a, a lot of interesting younger fighters here on the undercard. I, I just want to highlight one more, uh, and that's Jake Hadley, someone that, you know, we saw in Contender Series. He finished someone from my neck of the woods, Carlos Condelario, really tough fighter, and he got him out of there via triangle choke in the second round. That was actually his, uh, no, his Contender Series fight was against Mitch Raposo, but Candelario was his most recent fight, but he's got Malcolm Gordon on his hands and Hadley's a massive, massive favorite. W from what you've seen from Hadley, Joseph, do you feel like this is a guy that, I mean, I think most people think he's going to win, but is this someone that we can see as a major contender down the line? Honestly, I don't even, I, I, I recognize him, but I can't recall the fight. So I don't know. I don't think he's going to just pull up on Malcolm at all. Malcolm has some fights behind him. And uh, I I just think I think that the experience is with Malcolm not by a whole lot but more I don't know much about Jake and I didn't see his recent fight I wish I had but uh, I don't know I might be leaning more towards Malcolm on this one. Oh okay well he's a massive underdog again the odds let me just make sure I have that right yeah Jake Cadley minus four hundred Malcolm Gordon plus three hundred five plus three ten. Yeah, so, I, I mean, Hadley's a, a significant favorite. And, you know, when you're talking about Malcolm Gordon, this is a guy, I mean, his most recent loss was to Mohamed Makayev, so someone we just talked about was fighting on this very card. He's been in there with high-level opponents, so we'll see what he can do against the young upstart Jake Hadley. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of fun fights here on this one, but that main card, Joseph, that we dove in and talk about, that's the one that everyone is really looking forward to uh, for, for that main card to start. It's going to be a 5 p.m. Eastern time start because it is in London, England. So we don't have to be up quite as late uh, here on the East Coast as we normally do for pay-per-views. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know you are. Where are you watching the fights at this weekend? Uh, I, I got invited onto a podcast. Um, I might end up doing it there, but I might end up asking them to do it sooner so I can just like pull up at my coaches or something like that and watch it. That's kind of what I prefer, but either way, I'm going to be watching it with friends and I'm going to be super stoked to see that main event and the co-main. <laughs> It's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Again, UFC 286 goes down tomorrow. Make sure you tune in and watch all the great fights. For Joseph Holmes, I'm Ryan Jarrell. We will see you guys next time for UFC San Antonio, right back here on All Access MMA.